Well, <laughs> I, the, I guess the, the plan for this record was uh, just to do whatever we wanted again. Because last record we did that, and we just we changed our style a little bit, and um, we just kind of just took whatever direction. But this one, I guess we had more of a plan. Like we wanted to go back to our heavy roots and do a, a heavier record. So we just got really angry with it with all the music and, and Brett got super angry with all the lyrics in it and um yeah it just came out fucking heavy really yeah. heavy do you yeah. think it's like time for like even to like mix it up with like a guest rap spot like Danny Brown or something that'd be fucking <laughs> rad that would be good that would be I awesome would do, I'd do it I, like we're totally open for yeah. suggestions or anything like that's that's I guess the good thing about being in this band and stuff there's there's writing and stuff wise there's not really that many restrictions if something yeah. if someone has something different that they want to bring in and it's not necessarily our genre it doesn't get discredited or anything until you know if it works it works but that's the thing you can only kind of wait till it's released and everyone's always going to have this opinion because they expect yeah. bands to just like make the same record make the same record you know and um there's only so many ways you can fucking polish you know the same shit over and over yeah, again exactly right. and at the end of the day if you're satisfied in the cohesion that you guys as a band have yeah you know between years and like once it's pressed it's done you know yeah. and you can yeah you kind of let it go yeah yeah definitely 100 it's always a bit nerve-wracking but before release so we'll see how it goes yeah it must be um you know after investing so much time and your finances in verona for exposure internationally you know this relentless relentless touring that you guys have done and um you know, it's kind of benefited your exposure so much. Uh, what's the, your advice for young bands now who are struggling to do the same thing? I guess my advice would just be definitely stick to what you love writing. Don't try and write something else because you, you know, you want to, or you think you have to go in a certain direction. Um, and basically it all comes down to hard work. If you want to get somewhere, you've got to put the effort in, whether it be touring, writing, you got to do what you got to do. A like A lot of it, like a lot of bands, struggle because of the actual touring aspect because it's so expensive a lot of unsigned bands just physically can't do it financially because it's fucking expensive like i'm not gonna lie like we've we're poor as fuck at the moment just from throwing everything but you put all your money back straight into touring. every, every yeah. bit of yeah. money we beat like yeah. bib make it just goes straight back yeah. into the band like we don't pay each other fucking nothing yeah and we just and we do that and we live like shit and we have no fucking money because we love what we do but yeah. people, a, yeah. sometimes people don't really understand that and a lot of people take it for granted like yeah but that's the investment you know? that you do make into your own career yeah, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and you know eventually whether it pays off or not like I guess no one really just decides to start a band to go fuck I want to make a million dollars and be yeah. Metallica do you know what I mean oh yeah. you do want to be Metallica but, you do like, but, uh, but that's another thing like maybe the maybe the kids these days have a, a bit of a fairy tale thing that, that they think is going to happen you know someone sees you and then there's just this explosion it's it's not that at all. It's just. It's not the 80s anymore. Yeah, it's just like you. You just got to give gear everything you can, yeah. tour your ass off, not be at home ever, and hopefully everyone you play in front of sort of it likes you. It makes you value things as well. Like if you uh, can afford to buy uh, something, yeah. like if you can spend 500 bucks on yourself, which is like for me I unheard of. Be you're like, stoked. wow. Yeah. You're like, I'm like Jay Z rich. Like, <laughs> 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 like drinks are on me. Yeah. Um. You know, uh, whatever you know, whatever kind of offset of that is, you know, um, is that it can make really powerless young kids power, feel powerful. It's like an outlet for outrage and repel. Like, do you consider your position in the industry as one that's conscious of your audience and how you influence them? Yeah, definitely, absolutely. Like, I mean, I, I always try and write about, you know, experiences that I've, that I've actually had and, and things I actually care about. And I think people you know, who, who do like our band, listen to that and sort of, you know, it either helps them get through some things or whatever, but, you know, I'm just a normal dude talking to normal people about normal things realistically. So hopefully, you know, like they can take something away from it. And, yeah. And it's like, you know, when you were younger as well, like you'd put like an album, whether it was like, you know, in this genre of music or, you know, you know, a Tupac record or something like that, or a B record for me, definitely. Like, you know, something that can transport you and make you feel confident, safe, yeah. and a completely different environment. I think that's that's the power of music. Power though. Of music yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it's yeah. just the way way it's been for hundreds of years, I guess. You know. Yeah. Since they picked up fiddles. Yeah. And stuff and knocked rocks together. Well, maybe even thousands of years, probably. I think the first instrument was. I don't know. Probably a, a drum or two rocks or something. Two rocks. I'd go. Or a stick. I'd, two I'd go sticks. Yeah, two, two sticks. sticks. Two sticks. Yeah. I reckon two sticks. 
And if you were shit on the sticks, you like hopefully you can make a fire out of them anyway. So. <laughs> if you were shit on the sticks back then, you you might have been burned or dead. Yeah. <laughs> Get out, new one. Yeah, yeah. It's new like really guy. risky rock and roll, yeah. hey? Like you set yourself on fucking fire. Bring the new stick guy. <laughs> you better be good or else. <laughs> um, you know, you guys are considered the apex of the Sydney scene, and I was wondering who you think is killing it, especially in your area. You know, the freshmen's. Good question. There's a, lot, there's a lot of bands from Sydney that are killing it now. Like Northland's absolutely smashing. Like a, not even just Sydney, like Australia. Like this. But so is In Hearts Wake, and um, there's a lot of upcoming bands that I don't think any, hardly anyone's ever heard of, and they're going to be smashing. Yeah, and then it. next year is going to be huge for both those bands. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, but definitely. Yeah. We're all on busy schedules, and like those bands that I just mentioned, like we're all signed to the same label, so. We've all, all three bands have got big shit happening for next year and beyond. So I don't know. I guess that yeah, the people who are leading it, the North Lane, like they're just smashing everything. Like that was incredible because it was only like a year ago they were just shit kicking around DAL clubs and they, they yeah. released a record yeah. and it was well, just record, blew everybody's head well, off. Yeah, but those records are sick. Like that, it's undeniable music. You can't you can't deny that music. It's just so good. So kids just instantly just loved it and they just blew up so big because of it and it's fucking awesome and that's what's so interesting about that industry as well like not just from your peers but also from the audience because it is such a close-knit tight yeah. passionate community um everyone kind of gets behind that you yeah. about your peers yeah, as well definitely. um you know and finally like being road dogs what are you guys what have you guys learned about yourselves and each other i've learned that i need my own time <laughs> Um, yeah, everyone needs their own space, yeah. but we're okay. Like we're pretty good as far as getting along on tour goes, and like it's just like touring around the world with your with the mates, like your boys, you know. So it doesn't really matter. Like I, I know I always miss home. I miss my own bed. I miss fucking my own shower and my dog, cats. That's legitimate. And the beach. That's all I miss. Like I, I don't like give a shit about my friends because I hate them. <laughs> All of you motherfuckers out there. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're all losers. Awesome. Thanks so much for taking Thank you very much. Thank you.